for God's word. I'm excited, Isaiah. And uh, let me just share a little bit about Isaiah, where we're at. We just started uh, this book, Isaiah. It's the first in five books called The Major Prophets. Everybody say Major Prophets. Now, it doesn't mean they're like cooler than the other prophets. It just means they're bigger books. And there's 66 chapters in this book, which is interesting, because how many books in the Bible are there? 66. And the first 39 chapters of Isaiah, you'll just, it's like the heat, <laughs> the heat from heaven speaking through Isaiah, how you guys are off, you guys need to change. And then there's a shift in chapter 40 through uh, 66, and God is, through Isaiah, prophesying the Messiah to come. You remember Isaiah 53, the suffering servant, it's so wild. Speaking of the Christ, Jesus Christ to come, like years in advance, super, super powerful. So the rest of the year, church, we're reading through the prophets, so get your seatbelt on. Get ready to be challenged, and uh, I'm excited. Super cool word here. A Couple quick things too about Isaiah that are pretty interesting. Isaiah chapter 61, when Jesus started his public ministry, he quoted Isaiah 61. The Spirit of God is upon me to preach the good news to the poor. Literally, Jesus rolls up into the synagogue, he takes the scroll and he prophesies, a, he's reading Isaiah, this prophecy about him. Can you imagine, by the way? He's like basically saying, I'm the one that Isaiah was talking about, like hundreds of years before, I'm God and stuff. Can you imagine? John the Baptizer, remember John the Baptist, that wild dude? Well, how did he start his ministry? He quoted Isaiah 40, the, the voice of one crying in the wilderness. So cool. Isaiah 9 predicts that the Messiah would be born of a virgin. That'd be a pretty good indicator, by the way. Anybody? Uh, God and stuff, he came, he's, uh, she never, had relations with, with a dude, but now God came through her womb. That'd be a pretty good indicator. This is who he says he is all throughout. So study this again. It's a powerful book. And today I'm excited, chapter 28. I've been reading the Bible for over 25 years and I've never seen this. I don't know, you know how like the Bible just changes throughout? It's, it doesn't change, you change. And there's certain things that just are highlighted from the scriptures. So today, I wanna to share this message called Sowing Seeds, and I'm really excited. So if you're ready, just say, I'm ready. Anybody hungry for the word of God to feed your soul? I love it. Well, let's pray, let's get into it. If you're online, pull the car over, do something, man, like get ready. This is a word for us in this season. God, what a privilege again to be your spokesperson. And I pray, God, as always, would you get me out of the way? I wanna decrease that you might increase. Would you flow through me now to hearts all across this auditorium listening online? We pray for light bulbs to go off conviction of the Holy Spirit, challenge, comfort, encouragement. I pray for a church that's humble, that's winsome, that's tactful. Our eyes open to the opportunities of hurting people out in our culture, they just need a touch from you. And so God, would you speak now for your glory in Jesus' name, amen, amen. Well, have you ever had God highlight someone to you on your path? Meaning, in your daily life, your regular rhythm of life, <laughs> I'm looking at you like you're a Panera guy, right? Um, I'm a Panera guy too, we, we run into each other quite a bit. There must be something, you know, the bromance over a bagel, something, you and I. Um, maybe at school, in your neighborhood, wherever you're at. Um, I, I like to work out at different gyms, and this happened to me years ago, back in 2012, and this, this mean old man was highlighted to me, right by the, the dumbbell section, 
And this guy, he, how do I describe him? He was just like, like a bulldog, you know what I'm saying? And he had, he's the guy at the gym with the hood on, and he's just like, don't bother me. I'm getting something done. You know what I'm, you know, you know what I'm talking about? But there was like something about him, and I just felt this conviction of the Spirit going like, Todd, I'm calling you on mission to reach that man. I'm like, the mean old man? He's not gonna listen. He ain't ready for God. And God's like, I don't care. Just do it anyways. I'm like, ah. So it wasn't overnight, but what was interesting, God would just give me these little, like little encouragements and something as simple as like, what's up, bro? Like dap him up. Like, how you doing, man? Like it wasn't full like gospel presentation, like right in the middle of like, in the, by the way, have some social awareness, right? It's like the dude's trying to knock out, you know, 95s, like in the middle. Let me just tell you about Jesus. Okay, hold on, pump the brakes a bit. But in between sets, be like, man, hey, just want to encourage you, man. Like, how'd you get the biceps like that, bro? Like, can you give me some encouragement? Preacher curls? Okay, good. And, and so over time, <laughs> preacher curls, get it? Sorry, I'm sorry, dumb, dumb pastor jokes. And so... Back then, around Christmas time, we would do this outreach called Secret Jesus. And it was a really cool outreach. Now we call it, uh, I think, Christmas Love Out Loud Challenge. And, our, and what we share with everybody in the entire church, who's the one person in your life that God just keeps on bumping you into, that you have a heart for? Give them a gift, a gift card, and then invite them to church and um, give them a Bible. Something real simple. Like, Everybody loves a gift, a gift card. You just, right, free coffee. Like, you're like, cool, man. This church could be terrible, but I got free coffee out of it, right? <laughs> so he was on my heart. So I went and got him like a sweatshirt. I forget what I got him. I, think, I was trying to learn about him. Maybe it was a Nebraska sweatshirt. I think I, he, I knew that he liked Nebraska, something like that. Got him a gift card to eat some meat. I knew he liked to eat meat. Uh, <laughs> that's what I used to call him, actually. But um and then invited him to church. And guess what? He showed up. You remember when we used to do uh, Christmas Eve at the Orpheum Theater? You guys remember that? And it was so cool. We gotta do that one day, by the way. We gotta go back there. And so the mean old man shows up. I was like, there's no way. He shows up. He gets his family. He brings them. And I'm like, I'm picturing, the, I'm giving the gospel. He's getting saved right then and there for sure. And nothing happens. You know what I'm talking about? And you're like, well, they're never gonna get it. What I didn't know at the time is that it wasn't God's time yet. The soil of his heart had been flattened, had been hardened by life. And all the Christians and different people that would try to encourage him and share Christ with him, it, it just wasn't time yet. The soil was hardened. That was 2012. 2013, we'd be dapping him up in the gym. 2014, loving on him. 2015, encouraging him. 2016, is this guy ever gonna get it? <laughs> 2017, please, Lord, will you grind up the, the hardness of his heart so when that, that seed goes in the soil, it can produce some fruit? God, will you do something? And there was prayer and there was practical just toiling, you know, the soil of his heart. And 2018, randomly, I get a phone call from the mean old man. And the mean old man is talking about how his marriage just blew up. Could you meet with me? And I'm like, I've been praying for six years. I'm trying to hold it together, y'all. I'm like trying to play it all cool. Like inside, I'm like. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? When like. It's like you seal a deal you're like, and you're trying to play it cool. You know, it's like, yeah, man, I think I can find time in my schedule. Like, <laughs> and I'll never forget it, man. He comes to my office and we're sitting on these leather brown chairs. It's me and him who I've been praying for for six years and sowing seeds for six years and his wife. And I just looked at him lovingly and said, hey, man, First of all, let me just give you hope. Jesus can forgive anything. I don't care what you have done. He's ready to forgive if you're willing to accept him and go all in. 
Jesus came to pay the penalty for that sin, shared the gospel by God's grace. This, this man comes to Christ, and his, his, so well, his wife the entire time is just stone cold. But God gave me a word, a word of wisdom, like her face might be like this, but the soil of her heart is ready. She's gonna get saved and be like a fireball for Christ. I get this word, and so by faith, I'm like, I'm just going, they're gonna get it. And so sure enough, little by little, the wife comes around, they get saved. And I just wanna tell you who my friend is. In fact, I think they have a picture, a couple of pictures of him right there. There he is right here. <laughs> Matt Jackson, our Next Steps pastor, and his beautiful family. And by the way, just gets his master's degree in counseling like you do from Grand Canyon University, so proud of him. One of my most trusted advisors and best friends who's always got my back, by the way. So if you try to mess with me, you gotta go through MJ Meet Jackson if you wanna get to me. <laughs> Why do I share that story? Because I really believe in these days, God's highlighting Matt and April Jackson's all across our culture right now and God wants to send you to sow seeds and be patient and prayerful in perfect timing. God will supernaturally allow that plant to grow and see seeds. It's so cool to see what God is doing through this couple. April, the one who was stone cold at the meeting, oversees like all of our volunteers at this church. You don't believe, listen, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna believe for you. The person at your workplace in your neighborhood that you think is so hard, I guarantee you in the right season, God's gonna get him. He's the hound from heaven, sniffing them out, man. And he's sending you and I to reach them for God's glory. In Isaiah 28, there's a small section that really highlights this idea of the farmer. You're the farmer, by the way, Farmer Dave. And we're called to go sow seeds out in the culture. And there's different soils. And we'll get into it a little bit later. Matthew 13, Jesus talks about the parable of the soils. Some are hard, some are rocky, thorny, but some are good and they're ready. And you and I are called to be Farmer Daves and Farmer Browns and whatnot. And we're, and we're out in the culture sharing these seeds. But we're also practically plowing and, and we're, we're sent by God to build relationship and be winsome and to see that, that hard soil soften up little by little. And so I wanna show this to you. And again, forgive me, it might be a little eisegetical, might not be absolutely right on when it comes to context, but if, will you give me a little grace today? Anybody, will you give me a little grace? You're like, I don't even know what eisegetical means. Okay, good, so just get this word real quick. I really think this is gonna help us. Isaiah 28, starting in verse 23. Listen to what the Bible says. Listen to me. Everybody say, listen. Listen, listen to me. Listen and pay close attention. It's funny, I've been training our staff lately the power of paying attention. And when someone's speaking, to give them eye contact to be focused. I think it's a skill set that's lost in our culture today. Mac, look at me, right? Look at me, right? And when I'm speaking, you got it, you got it. That's a social skill that you can, you can learn. We, we, uh, every uh, Wednesday, our whole staff goes to a gym and we're challenged by this coach. I hate him and love him all at the same time. And he was trying to give us instruction on our workout. And a couple of our staff members were having a side conversation. I'm like, yo, be quiet, the coach is talking. And they kind of looked at me like, hey, whoa, 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 whoa. I probably, sorry guys, I didn't have the right attitude, but I think it's powerful. I think that's what God's saying right here. Listen up. Listen up, church, I got a word for you. There's hurting people out in our culture right now, and you, I'm sending you to go reach them. Look at the very next verse. Does a farmer, just take your finger, point to your head right now and say, I'm the farmer, okay? I'm the farmer, okay? Does a farmer always plow and never sow? Is he forever cultivating the soil and never planting? 
Does he not finally plant his seeds, black cumin, cumin, wheat, barley, and emmer wheat? Look at this. this, this hit me so hard. Each in its proper way and each in its proper place. That's so good. The farmer knows just what to do. How, how do you know? How do you know, farmer? For God has given him and her understanding. Oh, that's so good. Let's just stop right there really quick. A couple things. Did you see what he said? Like, does a farmer just continue to plow and never plant? And so I was doing some study on the farmer. Where are my farmers up in church real quick? The disc plow. You know what the disc plow is? It's that plow that's got the discs, the metal, and they, you know, the, the ground is all hard. Before they plant the corn, what do they do? They get their disc plow on. It's, you know, it's like, and it's just working the soil. It's getting it all ready. But imagine if the farmer's like, yo, I'm just gonna go plow, but I'm never gonna plant. But then they expect a crop eventually. It's like, bro, you gotta put the corn in, Holmes. You, you did, like, you know, you did the plowing deal. And this hit me. Like, I think there's a lot of saints. We're sowing seeds, but we're never, we're, we're, we're plowing, but we're never sowing seeds. We're never taking our shot. We're my single people, by the way. Raise, raise your hand. Okay, if you're single, look around real quick. Okay, so, so sometimes you gotta take your shot, man. You gotta take a shot. How do you know she's gonna say no? Give a shot. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes the people we run into, I'm scared to share with them. But you know what? Maybe they're ready. Maybe the soil's ready. You, you've been tilling up soil. That person at work, you've been loving on, encouraging them, giving them gifts, but you've never shared Jesus with them. Can I just tell you, maybe their soil's ready. I, I missed an opportunity recently. One of my homies I played uh, baseball with in high school, I was kicking it with him, playing some golf, and we had this good time, and he even teed me up, and I backed down. I w I've been toiling the soil, and God's like, share the, share the word. And I back down. I'm like, what? I'm a pastor. He already knows that. What's my problem? Have you ever been there? Yeah. What are they going to think? Uh, maybe it's a little bit too much at this point. It, there's this weird like tension between what's too much and what's too little. And I think sometimes we're on the other side as well. Imagine this. That same farmer, he's like, man, I, got, I don't got time to till the soil. I'm just gonna go ahead and plant the seed already. I got a bunch of corn. I'm late. I was in Cancun, man. I missed out on like, like, the, like the, what do you call it, plowing season. So I'm just gonna come back as a farmer and just start scattering the seed. Good luck, buddy. And here's a word. I think this is, might be the word for the church if you don't get anything else out of this word. Could it be that you and I are called to practically plow in this season the people in the areas that God takes us? What does that mean? At work, at school, but y'all are out for the summer. Praise the Lord. When you get back to school, your neighborhood, the gym, different restaurants, wherever you and I are at, maybe we're called to just go an extra level, ask another question. Look at someone in the eyes. Give them a simple encouragement. I believe today God wants to challenge us as the church right now that there's some practical plowing that needs to happen. Some prayer. God, what are you inviting me into to reach that person? I was thinking about this. Because the whole key, <laughs> let's look back at it. Look at verse 26. Golly, this is so good. The farmer, okay, who's the farmer? Okay, good. The farmer knows just what to do. There's the tension. You see the tension? What do, I, what do I share? What do I do? That person's highlighted in my life. The farmer knows just what to do, for God has given him understanding. God has given him understanding. I was thinking about this. You know the person that's highlighted that you keep on bumping into? Who made, who made that person? Thank you, God. Do you think that God knows exactly what they need in this season? 
to maybe just be drawn to him just a little bit more? Wouldn't it be good for us as Christians to be able to just pause instead of trying to strive to see them come to Christ? And how about, God, what's something creative I can do to help that person get to know you? Can you give me insight to where they're at? Where, what's happening in their life? Are they broken? Are they going through a divorce? Have they gone through bankruptcy? Like, what is happening in their life? God, can you give me some wisdom on how to approach them? And I believe if we'll take the time to do that, I think something changes. I really do. Because we plow and then we also plant. It's a, it's a both end. But it's led by God's spirit. I love the vision of the church. It's experience God's best, love God, love people. When we talk about the five S life, the method, how we live this out. Do you guys remember the five S's? Very first thing. You want to experience God's best, what do we say? Surrender. Surrender. We're gonna give an opportunity for people to surrender their life to Christ. Like I said last night, a man who was about to commit suicide surrendered his life to Christ. He's going to heaven, has changed. It starts with surrender. Number two, get surrounded. I think, man, the, devil, the devil's goal is to keep you isolated. But when you take that next step and get surrounded in a small group, a serve team, maybe a marriage ministry, man, you're connected and you're surrounded, you're encouraged. When that enemy attack comes, man, you're surrounded by someone. What's number three? You are spirit-led. How about this? Oh, verse 26. When we're out and about as farmer, like Farmer Brown looking for people and God highlights people, guess what? God will give you a word in the season right there, spirit-led. And then we're self-fed, so we're in the word. And then we are... Oh, we are, we are not staying complacent. We are, we're sent. We're farmers planting seeds led by the Spirit. We're not striving. We're not forcing the seed down people's throat, but we are, we are tilling soil, and then we're planting seed. And it's all directed by God's Spirit. It's not in my own strength. It's a supernatural thing that happens, Lyndon, when you're out and about, and, some, and God just highlights someone right there, and he gives you a burden for them, and you're like, man, I really like that chick, man. She's cool. God, what can you do? Like, can you give me wisdom on how to reach her? Maybe You have a creative gift. Maybe you, maybe you just, uh, I don't know, you, you're good at taking pictures. You take a picture, and you find out what she likes. You take a picture, and you just go bring it to her for free. You say, man, you are on my heart. I just wanted to give this to you to bless you. How about that? Could that be practical plowing for the seed, the supernatural seed of the gospel to penetrate a heart? I, I, don't, know. I don't know what it is for you. I've been praying through this a lot. What, is this, what does this look like? And um, as I was studying this, God gave me three things, and you, you saw them in the text. Let's talk about this. As you and I, out and about, sowing seeds, the first thing I wanna talk about, you can write it in your notes, the proper way, the proper way. And I was even, because did you see it in the scripture? Did you see it? Does he not, find, look at 25. He's not finally plant his seeds, okay? These seeds, the word of God, black cumin, cumin, wheat, barley, emmer wheat, each in its proper way. You know there's a proper way to reach that person? I, I, I think sometimes we don't have social awareness and then divine discernment on how to approach. It's funny, like I just met you in the gym and you had a beautiful way of coming to me and connecting with me. You have a gift of social awareness and, and I appreciate that. We had this good discussion in Lifetime Cafe grabbing a protein shake. You have a gift, bro, like it, to, to go out. It's a proper way. And so I was studying this, and I was asking the Lord, what do you want to share with the church? Just a couple things that, that you've learned along the way that could help us as we're sowing seed. You guys ready for this? The, number one, write this down. Kindness and humility. You're like, dude, that was just over, that was just a revelation. I, here's what I really believe. In a world that's anything but kind, if you say please and thank you and give someone eye contact and have a genuine like compassion for someone and you're humble before them, 
Do you know it's so different in this world that someone will pay attention to you? What is that? It's practical plowing. Kind of, I think kindness is the currency of the evangelist in these days. You wanna make some deposits? Kindness. Let's just practice everybody together. Everybody on the count of three, I just want you to say please. One, two, three. Please. Oh. What if Love Church and all the amazing churches in our city and spirit-filled believers just simply make a change and we actually have some manners. Yo, give me that uh, omelet with the bacon, make it crispy, and the potato, hash browns, super crispy. Are you a Christian? <laughs> and then jip the, the server as you leave at your Bible study. Hold on, man, what are we doing? Sorry, I get a little excited about that kind of stuff. <laughs> that wasn't real kind or humble at all. Kindness and humility. Look at Jot this down, Colossians 3.12, so good. Paul writes to the church in Colossae, here's what he says, therefore, as the elect of God, that's you, farmer, that's you, you're the elect of God, holy and beloved, you know you're beloved, you're chosen, you don't earn God's favor, you already got it. Put on, what does it say? Put on tender mercies, bless you, kindness, there it is, humility, meekness, long-suffering. Long-suffering, it also means patience. And that's patient with all people, including the annoying person in the cubicle next to you, including the leader, or the manager in your division at work that they don't know Jesus and all that you get is hate and legalism. Can you still be kind and humble before them? Pastor Jim, who is... Uh, one of my heroes in the faith, he's on our staff, he's kind of the pastor to the pastors. He has this gift of evangelism. Talk about plowing and planting. Just last night he told me uh, his refrigerator broke down and he had to go to uh, the Monopoly in town to get a refrigerator and this young man was the salesman and he, man, Jimmy is so humble and kind and it's just, peop he's so winsome. By the way, you wanna, you wanna win some souls? Be winsome. He's so winsome, and he's building a bridge with this young man. And after he makes the transaction, he asks the, the young man, would you mind if I, you know, ask you a couple of questions about your faith? How'd you grow up? And, and he said, would you mind if I share with you what the Bible says about connecting with God and going to heaven one day? And the young man and there's not a million customers waiting, by the way. That's social awareness, number one. And so Jimmy looks at the man and he tells him the gospel, the plan. What's the plan? God created us as humans for a relationship. The problem, I messed up because I did my own thing. The solution, God sent Jesus Christ the Savior. And now what? You, you have you an have opportunity right now. And, the, and the, man, the young man looked at Jimmy and said, I've never heard that said about Jesus that way. How about that? The soil, Jimmy, and I love Jimmy. Jimmy's like, you know what su successful evangelism is? Shoot your shot, baby, just give him the gospel. You don't know what that soil looks like, baby. Bring it. So I honor you, Pastor Jim. Thank you for leading us, man. I'm always challenged by you. Jimmy says this, be light, invite, and recite. Woo. Listen now, we live in a dark world, be light. Jesus is the light of the world. You connect with him and then he flows through you. Everybody throw up the L, that's what it is. We, we love God and now he loves, his light flows through us. We're like little flashlights in a dark world. Invite. Our first Saturday in the summer encounter a couple weeks ago, after I shared uh, that first message, I felt God wanting me, again, I'm asking God all the time, where, you know, kill me, fill me, send me, where do you want me to go? And I felt, I'd never been to this restaurant, just, just next door to the church, and I felt God saying, go to that restaurant. And Denise and I had a couple that we had like a little double date with, 
And so we rolled over there. And there was this young man, probably in his mid-20s, lower 20s, and really cool cat. I could vibe with him. And so I'm, you know, I'm like, okay, Lord, he, the Lord highlighted this young man. And we're connecting. And I'm like, what do you recommend? He recommended this steak. I hit the steak. It was great, good food. And we're loving on the guy. Just, again, what were we doing? Plowing. Practical plowing. Being light. And then invite, invite to church. And I, I asked him, I said, have you, have you ever been invited to love church? He's like, oh, yeah, plenty of times. So thank you guys, you're being light and invite. I said, well, you know, again, no pressure, bro, but I'd love to have you. We'd love to have you anytime. He has no idea I'm the lead pastor of the church, you know. I'm just, just trying to build bridges and encourage him. Five days later, I walk into the gym. Same dude is doing tricep pushdowns like right in front of me. I'm like, ha, okay, highlight, highlight, mean old man, young, cool guy. <laughs> like, what? Doesn't matter. He's right there. And so I'm like, Lord, what do you want me to say to this guy? Do you want me to go full in, full gospel? Do you want me to encourage him? And I just sensed, just drop another seed, man. And so I waited till his set was over, by the way. Social awareness, Christians, please. <laughs> Done with it. Oh, bro, what's up? I just wanted to thank you, man, for recommending that steak. It was bomb, man. All right, cool. I don't want to mess up your workout. Get after it, bro. Get after it. He's like, oh, the church guy. Yeah, dog, what's up? I'm praying that young man's gonna come. He's gonna hear the gospel. And in God's perfect timing, the seed is gonna hit that softened soil and he's gonna get saved and his life is gonna forever be changed. And that's the opportunity that we have. Kindness, humility. How about <laughs> caring and thoughtful good deeds? Old school good deeds. My wife leads so well with this. Just uh, recently, we had right next to our house, someone moved in. And you, out of our kitchen window, you can see their back patio area. And my wife noticed, as she's led by the Spirit being a farmer, she noticed that the dude has two grills on his patio. He's got like a meat smoker and a grill. She's like, well, clearly this dude likes meat. And let's go get them some, some fillets and welcome them to the neighborhood and just bless them in Jesus' name. I'm like, brilliant. Can you get me some steaks while you're at it? Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> so we rolled a high V or whatever, and I'm like, cool. And, and I'm a dude, so I'm like thinking, you know, the packaged meat, like I'm just gonna grab the packaged meat, walk up to his front door, be like, yo, God bless you. Welcome to the neighborhood. Here's some steak. I noticed you got some grills back there. <laughs> Multiple grills. <laughs> I'm in the car for an hour. My wife, I'm like, get some steak. She's like getting like cookies and all kinds of, just basket full of stuff. And I'm like, you know what though? That, that right there, thank God for the gift of giving right there. Good deeds, just old school, thoughtful, good deeds. And we roll over there and it's so funny. You know when you first move into a house, like you're stressed out, you're just trying to get the house ready. You could sense that it was later in the evening. The, the socially unaware Christian would have just gave full gospel, prayed. The cat's trying to run out of the, the door and everything, you know? But my wife, so socially aware. By the way, social awareness could be the very secret sauce when we're sowing seeds. Notices that, say, hey, we just wanted to welcome you to the neighborhood. God bless you. Pray you receive this gift in Jesus' name. And we just bounced. What was it? Sowing a seed. Sowing a seed. By the way, Jesus, did you know, he met practical needs? It wasn't steak, it was fishes and loaves. Fed 5,000 people. What did that do, Joel? What did that do to, they come in need and God himself, Jesus breaking bread and distributing it. Old school Caring and thoughtful deeds. I was uh, asking our staff recently, how are you building bridges? Let me just give you this. This is super practical. One of the ladies on our team, she said, you know what I've been asking God to just use me to do a lot when it comes to sowing seeds? Genuine, heartfelt, simple compliments. That's the beauty of, listen, 
If you go, man, this, I don't know if I can give steaks and do this and that. Can you give a compliment? So simple. And don't be the weirdo like making up stuff. Like make sure it's genuine. Genuine comp, like compliments. She's been doing that. Another young lady, it was actually the daughter of one of our staff. She came into the workout. She probably regretted that she did, but she, she made it and she thrived. And I looked at her, I said, how are you building bridges lately? She said, you know what I've been doing lately? God's given me this heart of compassion for people that are hurting. And I have, all I've been doing is sitting and listening to young ladies that are going through a tough place in their life. I said, that's Jesus. I said, you're not, you're not saying anything. No, I'm not saying one word. All I am is listening. And this young lady knows about loss, lost her mommy when she was a little girl. And now God uses that pain and gives it purpose. And now she's a minister of the gospel. And guess what? She's not even saying anything. She's listening to someone. Powerful. What is she doing? She's plowing. She's plowing. She's practically plowing. Because you don't know when the soil of that heart is going to turn and that young girl is going to go, now why are you always paying attention to me? Why are you have compassion for me? Thank you for asking. I'm going to tell you because I know the compassionate one. And it opens up a door in the right time. Proper way, number one. Number two, jot this down real quick. The proper place. The proper place. You're like, where? Where, am I, where should I be sowing seeds? Here's the answer, everywhere. Acts 1, verse 8. I love this. Jesus comes, he dies for the world. He's buried, resurrects. He's with his homies for 40 days. And then he's gonna bounce up to heaven. And then this, this is what he says. He says, but, but listen, disciples, you're gonna build this church. He says, but you will receive what? You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Again, this is divine discernment. It's spirit-led as we're sent. It's beautiful when the Spirit comes upon you. And then you will be my witnesses, my little evangelists, my farmers, telling people about me. Where? Where, church? Everywhere, at the dentist's office even. I hate the dentist's office, except I love the dentist. Sow seeds. Everybody say, sow seeds. At the doctor, at the dentist, at work, at school, at the gym, at that restaurant that you're always at. One of our pastors, I asked him, uh, the whole team, he said, for whatever reason, I've been having a hankering for charbuff wings lately. Anybody hungry for some wings right about now? Let's go. Speaking of meat. And he said, it's interesting because as, as I'm asking the Lord who to highlight, it's one server at this restaurant with these bomb wings. And a lot of times I'm there and, there's, and she's not really busy. Social awareness number five that I just gave you. Nothing worse than trying to flex for your friends sharing the gospel with a server who's got eight tables she's trying or he's trying to have some awareness, right? So settles down a little bit. And he said he's been eating the wing. It's like eating wings and sharing like just stories and encouraging and be light and then invite. And he said now this server is coming to this church and is gonna hear the gospel. Everywhere. Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, to the ends of the earth. Listen, you don't have to go on a foreign mission to be on mission. <laughs> you can be on mission wherever God sends you. Someone say everywhere. everywhere. You are the proper places. It's everywhere. Recently at Lifetime Cafe, there was another dude, not, not you from Phoenix, but there was another guy I connected with. And again, I'm talking about us as farmers sowing seeds and being aware, not just socially aware, but spiritually aware of God highlighting certain people. This one dude, really cool guy, buff guy, professional dude, I, I, he always gets dressed in my locker room. We're just like naked, like together. Sorry, I bet we're just in the same area. Sorry to give you that, but that's just being honest. So I'm like, he's naked, I'm naked. And and, but we still have these like discussions. <laughs> I have a towel on, all right, relax a little bit. I'm come, have fun at church. And so we, we connect and, and I see him in the cafe and I get my little almond butter shake and I'm just sipping it, catching up on some text. And I notice him coming to the cafe and God just puts highlight, you know, the, like the little pillar of light on the, on the man. And I just sense, God, what do you want me to do? 
And God's been training me lately to be a professional question asker as you're sowing seeds. Don't be shy, ask a question. Even you, we're my, we're my real shy people. I'm calling y'all out. None? Okay, all y'all are evangelists, okay. Ask a question. Here, here's, here, here, was, here was a crazy question. I'm looking at you right now, okay, here's the question. Because I'm asking, how do I plant? How do I, or excuse me, how do I plow right now? Because I really wanna plant a seed in this man's life. I don't know where he's at with the Lord, but I, I just want him to experience God's best. I've seen what God's done in my life. I want that for everybody, and now this guy's highlighted. And so I'm God, God, give me the ability to ask a question. You know what the question was? He ordered a bodybuilder shake, and I asked him, so what did you get in your bodybuilder? Like, theological depth of question. <laughs> what did you get in your bodybuilder shake? To get swole, right? It's like, he's like, oh, st strawberry and bananas, dude. Hits it every time. I'm like, bro, that sounds good. I might try that out. And then I waited. He came over next to me, and we had a 30-minute discussion that was very genuine and spirit-led. At the end of it, I'm praying over his shoulder. We're like connecting through our injuries. I'm like, yeah, bro, I got a bad hip and back. He's like, man, my shoulder is messed up. I'm like, man, we old. Let's pray for each other real quick. <laughs> it was super simple. Listen, did, I asked him, look, what did he get in his bodybuilder? I didn't come in like Jimmy full, like you know, the whole gospel, which we all need to be ready to do, by the way. But at that point, it was all it was, was what was it? It was preparing soil. Proper way, proper place. You guys ready for number three? Proper time. Boy, I tell you what, this is something I'm learning more and more. I want everybody to get saved yesterday. I want people to experience God's best yesterday. When I see people keep on shooting themselves in the foot, it breaks my heart. I'm like, what are you doing? Wake up. And, and I'm like, and then God reminds me, how many years did your mom pray for you? When you were shooting yourself in the foot, how about you just let me do it in my timing there, there big time? I'm like, you're right, God. This verse came to mind, jot it down, Ecclesiastes 3, 1 and 2, so good. Ecclesiastes 3, 1 and 2, for everything there is a season, a time for every activity under the heaven, a time to be born and a time to die. I was thinking a time to be born again, a time to die. Watch this, a time to plant and a time to harvest. Oh, that's so good. There are time, there's a time to plow, then there's a time to plant. There's a time that all you're doing, when, when I first met Matt Jackson, the mean old man, it wasn't the time for harvest. It wasn't gonna happen until six years later. There was six years of plowing before I could plant the gospel, God could, plant the gospel through me into his heart so there was a harvest. Can we be patient and prayerful as we continue to share God's word with people? Practical acts of kindness and wait on his spirit. I was thinking of the parable of the, sow the sower, and I won't read the whole scripture, but let me just refresh your memory, particularly if you're new to the Bible. Jesus gives this parable, and he's, and he's talking about exactly what we're talking about today. The farmer goes and sows seed. The seed is the word of God. And as the farmer spreads the seed, some of the seed, it, it falls by the footpath. Everybody say footpath. And that's the soil that's compounded. That was M MJ when I first met him. And his heart, the soil of his heart was compact. And the seed would go out and it would bounce off. It just wasn't the right time yet. Then it talks about that some of the seed went in some rocky ground. Everybody say rocky, rocky soil, not rocky four type soil, rocky. There's rocks, and, 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 it, and the Bible says that when the seed goes into that type of soil, which some of us Christians are, it says that there was never any deep roots that were developed, so in times of problem and persecution, guess what? The person falls away because there was never any depth. Do you know that's why we're freaky about self-feeding at this church? So you can be sound in your doctrine and you can have deep roots that go into the word of God and you're never moved no matter what problem you have. Then there's the thorny. Everybody say thorny soil. Thorny, man, that's the soil of my heart many times. You know what the thorny soil is? It's the, it's the seed that lands on this soil 
the plant begins to grow and there's fruit starting to be produced through that person's life, people are coming to Christ, you're being a blessing out in the community, but then some way, somehow, you get distracted from the main thing and then you get wrapped up in the cares of the world, that's like the thorns coming out and choking out your fruitfulness. How many humble enough at church to go, that's me in this season, right? That's me. I, I get distracted in the worries and cares of the world and, and riches and all this kind of stuff that's gonna fade away. Nothing wrong with man getting it, but if we get distracted, thorny. But the number four soil, Ooh, this is the good soil. Everybody say good soil. Ooh, good soil. What I've found about people that have good soil, they've gone through pain and pressure and problems. Most people that I got highlights and I'm, and I'm loving on and encouraging, if their life is groovy, their relationships are great, their bank account's great, their health is great, everything's good, it's so hard to reach them because they're like, I don't need God, I'm good. What's super interesting, you keep on practically plowing and then sometimes the pain in their life does the deepest work and now the soil's ready. Who did Matt Jackson call when he went through the diciest season of his life in his marriage, his marriage blows up, who did he call? The pain and the pressure he called the pastor. Do you know you're gonna be the pastor one day? You're gonna be plowing. The people are gonna be highlighted. You're gonna be just humble, tactful, creative, good gifts. You're gonna be blessing them. You're gonna be practically plowing. And just at the right time, you're gonna sense it and the harvest is ready. And you're gonna lead them to Christ. Proper time. Everybody say proper time. There's something about proper time. And I was studying this, and maybe the last verse I'll give you, it's the message version, okay, of chapter 28, verse 27. So if you could bring that up, this is the message version, Isaiah 28, 27 and through 20. Listen to this. At the harvest, the delicate herbs and spices, the dill and cumin, are treated delicately. On the other hand, Wheat is threshed and milled, but still not endlessly. The farmer knows how to treat each kind of grain. He's learned it from all from the God of angel armies, spirit-led, divine discernment. Watch this. Who knows everything about when and how and where. Golly, that's so good. He knows it proper way, proper place, proper time, who knows it? God, connect with him, practically plow, sow the seed, but let the Savior create the harvest in his timing. I'll end with this last story, and I'll get you to brunch so you can sow some seeds to the server. Just the other day, this week at Love Church, there was a young man who had hit a rough patch in his life, young guy, found himself homeless, jobless, hungry, hurting. And MJ tells a story, he was driving off the campus. This young man was on campus at Love Church. God was bringing him here. It's like a magnet, that's what God's doing, he brings people. So this guy was here and MJ was, he was on his way to do something else. He was driving away and God, in divine discernment, said, stop, go back and talk to that young man. He busts at you, he comes back, he's like, hey bro, like I noticed you here, anything I can do to help? And the guy's like, hey man, I'm hungry, I'm hurting, I'm homeless, anything you can do. MJ, by the Spirit of God, calls another guy at this church and says, hey, I just connected with this young man, he needs a job, would you be willing? He's like, absolutely, I'll hire him right now. This young man goes, works all week, gets a paycheck, has a place to stay, why? Because MJ, who now has this harvest in his own life, goes, I can't keep it to myself, I gotta give it away. And now the seeds keep on sowed and people get saved for the glory of God. Come on. 
Lord, that's our heart. We pray now, all of us as farmers today, would you highlight some folks that we wouldn't feel the pressure or we gotta convert souls? God, you'll do it, but God, give us the ability to participate in your great work, your great harvest. The harvest is ripe, the workers are few. So we, so we say, God, send us out into the, into the harvest field for your glory to help a ton of people in Jesus' name.